Rocket Lab's Electron launches for the first time, now on KNews. Hi, I'm Lucas and welcome to this short special episode and thank you to all the KNews boosters on Patreon. Electron's launch is currently scheduled for today, May 21st at 21 UTC from the Rocket Lab launch complex 1 in New Zealand. However, it has a 10 day launch window and Rocket Labs expect several postponements due to yet unknown problems during the first launch sequence. Electron is a micro satellite launcher and with only 17 meters in size one of the smallest rockets capable of reaching a stable orbit. Besides the size, it is actually quite similar to a Falcon 9 with 2 stages and 10 engines in total. 9 so called Rutherfords power the first and one the upper stage. The Rutherford engines are named after Ernest Rutherford who made big contributions to nuclear physics. I think the most famous experiment he is known for is the one where he shoots small negatively charged particles against a thin gold foil. These should according to physics back then shoot right through because atoms were believed to consist of a cloud of negatively charged electrons surrounded by a positive bubble. Rutherford however said, nope, I think these electrons circle a very tiny positively charged nucleus in the middle. Shooting his particles against the gold foil, some were deflected strongly, which was enough evidence for positively charged nuclei, since these would interfere with the negative particles on close flybys. The name nuclear by the way comes from the said nuclei, or more correctly pronounced nuclei. However, I am not a Latin pro and you can correct me if you want. Anyways, the very special thing about these Rutherford engines are their turbo pumps, which are driven by electric motors, hence the name electron for the rocket. These spin at 40,000 revolutions per minute and are as all electric engines highly efficient. Much more so than regular turbo pumps, which typically burn rocket fuel. The engine specific impulse is therefore with 327 seconds, roughly 5% higher than one of the Merlin engine, which burns the same but more densified fuel. Another upside I would say is the simplicity. Electric motors are very well understood and reliable. However, there is a downside, which is the mass of the batteries needed. Even though the engines consume 5% less fuel, the batteries themselves have a much lower energy density than the rocket fuel. This means the whole system adds more than 5% more mass and therefore loses payload mass compared to a similar rocket using regular turbo pumps. Another thing is batteries don't get lighter as they lose their energy. Wow, I get off track too easily. After 2 minutes and 30 seconds into the flight, the first stage will separate and the second one will ignite its vacuum Rutherford shortly after. The flight computer on the upper stage uses a field programmable gate array. Unlike a regular processor known from PCs or smartphones, such a FPGA does not require a operating system or things like drivers for example. Therefore it is extremely robust and cannot have blue screens. How this works is basically instead of writing regular software, the hardware of the chip itself is changed by the code. It has millions of switches like a normal CPU but is basically blank. You can then write or flash a certain switch pattern onto the chip. Getting an input like the rocket's height from one side, the switch layout directly provides an output on the other based on its clock speed and switch layout. There is basically no delay introduced by things like an operating system. And you can hopefully therefore imagine such chips are incredibly fast doing very specific calculations. However, they are not general purpose like normal CPUs and you can't change its function that easily by running another program, since they run no programs. Another neat thing is these boards are relatively cheap and often also used for educational purposes. After 7 minutes and 26 seconds, the upper stage will have finished its job if everything went according to plan and will release the test payload seconds later. Sadly, there will be no live stream, but Rocket Labs promise they will release the video footage as soon as possible, should the mission succeed. I still hope some locals will be able to catch the rocket launching and maybe stream it on Periscope for example. I keep my eyes open and should I find something I will sticky it in the comments. Ok, that shall conclude this Electron special and I hope to see you in the next weekly episode. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.